a, a new um, advisory center has just been opened in Singapore for something called Education USA, which is a State Department, U.S. State Department effort to help and outreach to Singaporeans and those who are living here to give them more information about uh, U.S. education, higher education, how to access it, and everything related to that. Let's go now to uh, Brian Rogov, the CEO of Excel Education, and Olivia Ding, who is an Education USA advisor. Um, Excel Education playing a key role in that you're going to house the actual uh, physical education center at the Excel World Academy up in Yishun. Uh, Brian and Olivia, welcome to the show. Hi, Glenn. Nice to be here. Hi, Olivia. Nice to be here, too. Thank you. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, Brian, why don't we start? Off, why don't you give us the overview of how uh, XL World Academy got involved in uh, hosting, if you will, maybe that's the wrong word, the Education USA uh, physical space up in Eastern. Sure. Um, well, look, I, I've actually been involved with Education USA myself for almost the last seven years. Um, and uh, had previously had an advising center at another school uh, that I was involved with here in Singapore. And so we're really fortunate uh, that uh, through the American Chamber of Commerce here, and I give a shout out to Dr. Xian Xian Lei, who, who really was, was part of, uh, really instrumental in, in pulling this partnership together. Uh, so we started talking many months ago and, and um, about really how can we help Education USA, give them you know, a good quality facility uh, to, to really showcase you know, American education. So started talking many months ago and uh, we're also able to uh, get a, a great talent in, in Olivia to really uh, manage that and, and run that for us. Um, and so we're, we're just pleased that uh, that's open to the public and uh, just, just had a, a kickoff uh, a ceremony last week for it. Olivia, uh, as we sit here now, 3,600 Singaporeans are currently studying at U U.S. universities. More than 33,000 have been to U.S. universities from Singapore since 2009. My question to you is, first, I'm surprised this hadn't, no one hasn't come up with this idea before because it seems so obvious to me that it's a no-brainer. And why do you think it's an important thing to have now? So Education USA was actually in Singapore before. Um, at the Stanford campus, as Brian was like very much involved in before. Um, but now we have a new center, and we're excited to reach out to Singaporean students because we really strongly believe in the value of international education and just providing open access for everybody to get a chance to see the wonderful options in the U.S. because there are over 4,000 universities, meaning someone will be able to find their best fit in a school that they may not have heard of, and that's what we're here for. Yeah, it's not only just the big Ivy League schools that we all know of, but so many uh, students go to uh, secondary and tertiary universities that are excellent schools uh, that may not have hit the radar of most Singaporeans. And Olivia, when you're going to be talking with folks about uh, education in the, in the USA, what what service will you actually be able to provide, let's say, a, a parent and their child comes in to see you? What will you be able to talk with them about? Uh, yes, so we will be able to cover any questions they have about studying in the U.S., whether that's getting started on their school list, um, how to fill in the application, how to organize all of the requirements they have. And we also provide free essay review, which I know is going to be very helpful. So for students who are worried about the January 1st deadlines, which is regular decision, they can email me their essays and I can just share some feedback and comments to wow. make sure that their profile really stands out. Interesting, yeah. And Brian, as you know, it's a very competitive industry. There's many universities in many countries around the world. Singapore has a very, very high university take-up rate. Many, many young Singaporeans do study at university level. Why do you think it's important now to have this kind of uh, organization, this building? It's a wonderful idea that's open to Singaporeans. Well, you know, I, I think uh, you said it earlier. I mean, I think there's maybe closer to 6,000 uh, Singaporeans studying at the moment in, in the U.S. And, you know, the center itself is open to Singapore, all Singapore residents, citizens, permanent residents, anyone residing in, 
in Singapore. And I, I think our hope, uh, obviously I'm biased, I, I see the positive aspect of, of American education. And I think, you know, as Olivia said, there's 4,000 universities that doesn't include, you know, community colleges and, and other, you know, vocational schools. So there's, you know, well over 6,000 opportunities, you know, that, that really come through Education USA. And so I think our hope is to, you know, especially in this part of the world, not just have people focus on, you know, the top 25 universities of, of which they have a very small chance of getting in, but maybe finding that really fantastic small liberal arts school in, in rural Nebraska, um, as an extreme example, that may be just perfect for someone. Uh, and then in addition to that, and it, maybe it's something Olivia can talk about too, is it's not just about advising and finding the right university. There's fantastic scholarship opportunities. Um, as long as you're, you know, looking at, at, at the breadth and depth of, of, of university opportunities in the U.S., you know, if you're a Singaporean, uh, there's a great opportunity. You might find that that small liberal arts university that maybe has a scholarship, saves your, you and your family a little bit of money, uh, and, and a great opportunity to study in the U.S. When you look at those, uh, some of those uh off-brand, uh, and that's maybe a bad way to put it, but but not the typical, you know, you know Ivy League uh, top 10 list. Um, there, there's also, a, I think, a cultural component of a chance for a Singaporean or somebody who's living in Singapore to experience a very different part of American society, American culture. Does that come into play when Education USA talks about the different educational opportunities, not just the academics that they're going to study, but but where, like you say, Nebraska or, or Ohio or someplace, uh, Minnesota somewhere, that they might not normally think of from a cultural perspective? Um, yes, absolutely. So when we talk to students about picking out their school list, we encourage them to think about all of their best fit factors. So cost mm -hmm. is one of them, location, weather, can they withstand the cold, culture, <laughs> would they like to kind of experience life on a farm? Or if they're interested in yeah. studying agritech, which is an up and coming industry, maybe go to a place that has open farmland so they can um, see that hands-on experience for themselves. And there's just so many options in the U.S., so it's really important that they figure out what they want, and then they'll be able to see the corresponding school. Olivia, yeah, you mentioned it right. Oh, sorry, go on, Brian. Go, go, sorry, Neil. Well, I was just going to say, look, to, probably to the behest of my own parents, I mean, my, my favorite part about the American education that I went through was, was really the social aspect. Um, they're probably disappointed in that, but, you know, the, you can learn <laughs> academics anywhere, but I, I think that's a unique characteristic of particularly undergraduate studies in the U.S. It's, it's, it's uh, I think, what sets it apart from many other places in the world. And it's a real social learning experience. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Olivia, on that point, you mentioned cost there. When you talk to people in Singapore, they say American education, it's expensive. But they're not always aware of the possibilities in terms of scholarships and partial funding opportunities and so on. I mean, maybe you can give some examples, but I'm sure that's something you must talk about in when you meet people. Mm. Yes. So cost is always a big concern. Um, so we introduced them to the idea of community colleges and the two plus two pathway, which is where you can take two years in a community college, which is a lot cheaper, and then transfer for another two years to complete their four year degree. And then the final degree will be from the four year institution. And then there's also a lot of scholarships. We have databases that they can use to search what majors they're interested in, and it can be filtered for only Singaporean origin students. So they'll know that um, it's relevant to them. Excellent. Yes. And Olivia, you, you are Singaporean yourself, right? You grew up in Singapore. Um, I am Singaporean. That's right. So what was your, I mean, tell us, what was your experience like? You studied in the U.S.? Uh, yes. So I am Singaporean, but I also grew up in the U.S. for quite a long time. Um, so it wasn't that bad of an adjustment for me. But I've also had Singaporean classmates while I was in university, and they mm. took very well to the education system. I think the Singapore education system really prepares students to excel academically, but also to get involved with the extracurriculars, take on leadership positions. Um, it's just a great place, lots of opportunity. Just to follow on from that, you mentioned a bit there. What would you say were the, e the key elements or the standout elements of an American education system as opposed to others that maybe sets it apart in your experience? 
So as Brian said, I think the social component is um, a big part of American education. And when you go to the U.S., you'll be able to make connections with people who are the top students from all over the world. They've decided to go there for the International Cultural Exchange. And you get to be part of that conversation, bring all of that experience back to Singapore or continue on, um, have more global work opportunities afterwards. And I think it's just that early exposure to the potential of social mobility elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That will well, that set makes, you up for future sense. success. Networking, yeah. basically. Well, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, is, that is a part of it. We're, yeah. we're speaking with uh, Olivia Ding, Education USA advisor, and Brian Rogov, uh, the CEO of Excel Education. Brian, uh, this is a State Department driven uh, effort. You mentioned uh, Shen Chen Lei at the American Chamber of Commerce uh, helped put this deal together. W what does it look like to incorporate? A U.S. government program into uh, your the center that you've built at XL World Academy for this. Um, you know, what is the interplay between what you're doing with what the U.S. government is offering on this? Yeah, I mean, I think probably the easiest way to explain it is it's kind of like a trilateral partnership between ourselves at the World Academy, uh, with the American Chamber of Commerce here in Singapore, and, and obviously the U.S. Embassy visa the you know Education USA. So it's a true partnership, and in terms of, of how we've structured it. We're obviously providing, you know, the physical brick and mortar and, and access. And, you know, the, the nice thing is, in addition to the amazing center that, that Olivia actually has, the, the one of the things that Education USA normally does in sort of non-COVID times is, is house and host um, university college fairs from the United States. And so, hmm. you know, with a, a thousand seat theater and, you know, things like the garage that we have up there, we've just got all these really amazing venues where, you know, we can host uh, once those dates come back where we can actually host universities coming from the United States and students coming in and having like a proper U.S. university fair. And I guess, you know, sort of related to that, and, and uh, Olivia was sort of demonstrating it when we had our, our ceremony last week, we actually ha have augmented and virtual reality tours of universities as well. So students can kind of come in and mm -hmm. put on a, a VR headset and, um, you know, take a tour of, of a university at the, at the advising center. Nice. Isn't yeah. it changed? When yeah. I visited the university, I just saw the pub, and that was it. And we left. The tides have changed. And much Maybe a better. virtual pub. We can get a virtual pub. <laughs> hey, there you go. I might go back to school. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, Brian, I wanted to ask you, you know, Education USA Advising Center, that's the name of it. What is your long-term ambition for this project? I think if we looked back maybe, you know, five years from now, I mean, I would have loved to have had a, a greater impact, particularly for Singaporeans and, you know, permanent residents here. I, I'd love to see, you know, Singaporean uh, enrollment in UN, U.S. universities increase. I, I think that it's, it's, in my own view, it's still relatively low compared to, you know, there's, a, there's an affinity for U.K. education here, obviously, just with a bit of the historical context. But I, I think part of that, and, and I think what our hope is with Education USA is that, Everyone always just wants to target those top 25, you know, the Harvards, the, the, the Yales of the world, and they're, they're just really missing on the amazing opportunities. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can kind of look back five years from now and not just have the number of students studying in the U.S. increase, but also a bit more the diversity of some of the uh, universities that they attend. And I think they'll be very, very happy once they learn more. Fantastic. Awesome. Brian, thanks so much. And Olivia, just one last question to you. Uh, I, I believe you're going to have a lot of different programs, seminars, things like that. How many folks per year do you expect or hope to work with uh, here to, to help get their questions answered about American universities? Oh, so for a year, maybe... Uh, somewhere near 4,000 or so. So <laughs> You're going to be busy, huh? <laughs> yeah. So we do individual advising, we do workshops and seminars, and then for the college fairs, we have those as virtual programs. So if yeah. anybody is free, we highly encourage them to um, visit us and uh, follow us on Facebook so they can see the events that we have planned. Yeah. How can they find you if they're interested? We're at Education USA Singapore, so it's pretty easy to search for us. And then if you go to our website, you can book the appointment directly through the link on our state.gov website. 
Wonderful. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity, I have to say. Any initiative that offers a pathway to higher education for Singaporeans, permanent residents, so on, has to be applauded. Great idea. Absolutely. And being able to do it overseas and get that cultural uh, experience as well, um, that is definitely a, a, a plus for any student. Brian Rogoff, CEO, XL Education, and Olivia Ding, Education USA Advisor. Thanks to both of you for being with us on Saturday morning, Money FM. Thanks, guys. Thank you.